But recently, they've become concerned greenhouse gases being released by permafrost might be driving temperatures higher, too. As the name suggests, permafrost is permanently frozen ground. So we thought, OK, this carbon is very stable, so nothing is going to happen. But as permafrost starts to thaw, this carbon becomes vulnerable. Since the mid-70s, carbon dioxide emissions from the North Alaskan wilderness have spiked by more than 70%. But while we know a lot about carbon dioxide, the impact of another greenhouse gas coming out of the permafrost is less widely known. The very one escaping from the Yamal and Easy Lake, methane. Methane is really important because it's much more potent in terms of its ability to trap heat. So it's about 30 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. Luckily, while carbon dioxide lasts centuries or longer in our atmosphere, methane only lasts around 12 years. But as a far more potent greenhouse gas, any large-scale increases in methane emissions have climate scientists seriously concerned. For now, more than half of methane emissions come from human sources like fossil fuels and agriculture, sources well understood by climate experts. But scientists are increasingly worried about methane emissions from permafrost. So far, they don't know how much methane the permafrost is releasing. And that's a big problem. In order to control our temperature, we have a certain amount of carbon that humans can release. That's our carbon budget. In 2015, the International Paris Agreement set a target for limiting global warming. Its goal was to keep the temperature rise to well below 2, preferably to 1.5 degrees Celsius. To stand a good chance of remaining below the 1.5 degree mark, one estimate states that humans could release a maximum of around 460 gigatons more carbon dioxide. But recent climate calculations are based on computer models with incomplete information. Unfortunately, a lot of these Earth system models that contribute to such goals do not take into account CO2 and methane emissions from permafrost. The most recent carbon budgets have started to include permafrost carbon. But some scientists believe they still underestimate the amount of carbon the warming Arctic will release, making temperature goals harder to meet and putting more pressure on societies to dramatically cut their emissions to compensate. So we think we have a certain amount of greenhouse gases that humans can release, but our target is wrong right now because we're not accounting for potential permafrost emissions of methane and carbon dioxide. Understanding the dynamics of thawing permafrost is now critical to predicting our climate future. So how much methane is permafrost emitting each year? And is this annual amount going to increase? Fairbanks, Interior, Alaska. Ecologist Katie Walter Anthony is heading out onto the frozen terrain. Walter Anthony was among the first to study Easy Lake. She's found concerning evidence it's not the only lake in the permafrost region that's releasing methane. So when you spear the spot, if I hear gas coming out, I'm going to try to ignite it. And if there's fire, we both need to get out of the way. OK. Ready? Yep. Whoa. That got me. Oh, shoot. Am I on fire? No, I was wondering. <laughs> What's smoking? 